Acting Speaker. Member for Swan Hills. Acting Speaker, my grievance is to the Minister for Heritage, and I thank him for taking it. It's, respect, uh, it's with respect to the preservation and protection of sites of heritage value in my electorate of Swan Hills. The first is St Mark's Church in Mount Helena, which was deconsecrated on the 22nd of January 2012 after serving the community for over 100 years. This site was brought to my attention some months ago by Owen Briffer of Lost Mundaring and Surrounds Local History Museum. Owen's, um, Minister Owen's an extraordinary young man. I, I met him very recently at the Hills Billy Cart Festival. He had his mobile museum in place with all sorts of artefacts and photographs and he's very knowledgeable, very passionate about, um, about preserving the Hills history. He's 13 years old. And, um, and drives just such a, a sort of re-engagement with the history of the hills. He does a wonderful job. And he started a Facebook page and an online petition dedicated to saving St Mark's. The church has unfortunately fallen into disrepair since deconsecration and has also been subject to senseless acts of vandalism, which is so disappointing that people in you know, if people think it's appropriate to just go and so callously attack um, uh, key parts of our Hills history. And I actually want to thank the members of the local community in the Hills that um, even within the last fortnight have um, taken steps to prevent further vandalism at the church. Um, I understand uh, that St Mark's will be protected and restored as a condition of any transfer and subsequent development of the land, and that should be uh, occurring through local government processes. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge Owen's commitment to the preservation of our local history. He's a, he's a truly remarkable young man. Uh, the second site is on Betty Street in Chidlow and was brought to my attention by Bob Shepherd, who's an esteemed historian and has been working tirelessly to try and have these sites recognised and protected. In preparation for an influx of troops from the East Coast in response to Pearl Harbour and the Japanese attacks in Northern Australia, 10 staging camps were built in Chidlow. By 1942, Western Australia was the base for around 30% of the Australian Army. Most of the 60,000 troops that served in WA in World War II would have spent some time at the Chidlow camps. In fact, very recently at a Scouts WA volunteers event, I met uh, Mr Gordon Cargee, 90, in his 90s, in his mid-90s, who um, only the day before I'd been at the Chidlow camps, the day after I met Mr Cargee, and he told me about the time that he had spent at the Chidlow camps. Quite coincidence, but an extraordinary one. Um, Chidlow played an integral and yet under-acknowledged role in the defence of this nation. And today, the site provides valuable evidence of the activity which formerly occurred there. Indeed, during a recent visit to the site with Bob, who, who also runs walking tours for, um, for local community members, and there was another amateur um, historian doing some metal detecting on the site, and he actually showed us some artefacts that he'd actually found that day um, on this site in Chidlow. So um, these Chidlow campsites are the only sites on public land close to Perth that have a direct link to so many servicemen and women. We could provide such a compelling narrative about our responses to Pearl Harbour, the defence of our state, Western Australia's contribution to the national war effort, and we could give people a really fascinating insight into daily camp lives, the daily camp lives of our servicemen and women. The people of Chidlow, we're really proud of our links to this nation's defence. We celebrate and commemorate the service of our men and women each year at our new memorial site and in very touching ceremonies organised by the state's newest RSL. Chidlow have set up the state's newest RSL and they do those services in conjunction with the Chidlow Progress Association. Our local tavern, um, the Chidlow Inn, it's a living museum. The publicans, Norm Brewer and, and Fran Berry, have completely transformed the place, filling it with fascinating memorabilia, including material covering a, a very proud military history. Chidlow could be the location of an invaluable community asset that would tell a story of significance to both local and national audiences. Now, recently, the Shire of Mundaring allowed the private development of the site where Camp 4 is located, and much of the heritage value of that camp has now been tragically completely destroyed. This has greatly upset the people of Chidlow. Many people are concerned that appropriate steps weren't taken to include the site on the Shire's municipal inventory, and it was therefore unprotected. 
There are still three other camps, though, um, located proximate to the destroyed site. I've been disappointed and, and frankly a bit confused by statements made by the Shire of Mundaring about the respective roles of the Shire and the State Government with respect to the protection of heritage sites. The Shire has stated that it's for the State to preserve these sites, yet I was under the impression that protections are actually um, delivered through the planning system, and this sits squarely in the remit of local government authorities. Minister, in the Hills, we have a deep history, a rich heritage that we're very proud of. We have community champions out there preserving the value of our historical values in the Hills. And um, I am aware that there have been changes to the Heritage Act that significantly now improve our state heritage regime. But I know that my constituents would welcome some clarification on how heritage is protected in Western Australia now, how the different roles of state and local governments um, overlap and relate to one another. So I'd be very grateful if you could outline the steps that can be taken to protect sites of significance to my community. If you could detail the process to obtain heritage listing and just clarify what the roles of local government authorities are and the state government in safeguarding places of historical or heritage significance. Oh, thank you. Can I uh, thank Minister for Heritage? Thank you. Can I uh, thank the member for her grievance? And this is a very important opportunity to. Uh, I highlight and reinforce the role that local government plays and must play in the ongoing protection of our state's assets and the heritage of our assets. Uh, and this is a very a good and timely grievance, Member. First of all, though, can I also acknowledge the, the, um, the heritage warriors that you have in your community that you've mentioned, including young Owen Biffer. I think I've met Owen and I have seen his, some of his work. Uh, which uh, is quite inspirational and uh, a remarkable young man and uh, his uh, efforts uh, I think are, are a wonderful wonderful uh, uh, example of uh, uh, young people taking a direct interest in the heritage of their local area and of course the importance in the story that is as you've highlighted the hills uh, hills area of, uh, of our, our state can I also acknowledge Mr Bob Shepherd who you've mentioned and I'll talk about Mr Shepherd's efforts with regard to uh, the Chidlow issue particularly, uh, but also can I acknowledge the work of your, uh, uh, the uh, tavern, Ch the Chidlow Inn, uh, publicans Norm Brewer and Fran Berry, because the, uh, it is people like Fran and Norm who also understand that to uh, have a, an inn, which of course is a place of hospitality, uh, is also a magnificent opportunity to celebrate and share the stories of their local area with those people who come uh, within their hospitality. So I think that's a tremendous, uh, tremendous thing for those. Now I know that there are many others in your electorate that are, are particularly attuned to the importance of heritage. Can I just go through a couple of things though? Uh, as you've highlighted, the Chidlow uh, camps that you've highlighted were overflow for servicemen <coughs> undergoing training and they are located in, the Betty, in Betty Street in Chidlow. And prior to the Heritage Act 2019 coming into operation, this site was not listed on the State Register or indeed uh, was not on the, what was known then as the Municipal Inventory of the Shire of Mundere. And my understanding is it still is not on the list. And I want to talk about that very shortly. Um, now, thankfully, um, a member of the public has nominated the site for heritage listing to the Heritage Council. And as you may be aware, the Council will consider that nomination as part of their, uh, their work and determine whether to undertake a full heritage assessment uh, at its December meeting. So that meeting is uh, imminent. Um, I can't preempt what the uh, Council will do with that, the, the Heritage Council, but obviously uh, the, uh, the nomination warrants consideration by the, the Heritage Council. Now look, I, mean, I am a little also concerned about mixed messages that the Shire may be sending to the community about its role in heritage issues. Let me make it very clear. Uh, local governments have a critical role in terms of heritage uh, acknowledgement because one of the things that is required now under the new Act, which is a McGowan government uh, achievement in heritage, is of course that they are required to maintain heritage surveys, uh, which of course um, now replace, if you like, the heritage inventories. These are very important because the, it is the local community, through its local shire or local council, that actually uh, has the role of, of, uh, 
uh, ensuring that those surveys are not only up to date, but indeed that they are always considering other sites, other assets that have a heritage nature that should be added to that. It is a responsibility of the local governments to do that. Now, many good local governments that do that with, uh, in terms of heritage do it in great consultation and close consultation with their community. And you have a large number of people who, are, who take heritage uh, issues very seriously. And uh, I would urge the Shire to understand its role in terms of maintaining its heritage survey, but also in looking very, very actively at other sites that need and warrant consideration to be on that list. And it should be on the list. That's the reality, because that does allow a layer of protection, because it is acknowledged by the, lo by the local community as being an area of significance. The other aspect, of course, is uh, that um, uh, the uh, other protections can be gained through the planning processes. And therefore, uh, through uh, consideration of rezonings and uh, zoning and land use uh, issues, that of course have a direct impact or a direct influence by the local shire. So it's not right if the shire is giving some mixed messages and saying uh, it is only the state that is responsible. That is not correct. That is not correct. And the community needs to understand that and hopefully continue to put pressure on the local shire to ensure that they uphold their responsibilities with regard to heritage protection. Now, what does heritage listing mean? Well, in the, site, in the entry of a site of the Heritage Register ensures that any future changes to a site are made with the approval of the Heritage Council. And that's an important process. And generally, the Heritage Council, whilst not there to prevent development, it means that there is a recognition of the role of the Heritage Council in any proposed development for a particular site. And should the Chidlow camps receive a listing, uh, the Heritage Council will be able to consider the proposed development and make recommendations to the developers. And of course, again, I under, underpin, the Shire has a, has a role that it can play to in terms of the zoning of that particular area or site. Now, in terms of the Act, um, the new Act, the Heritage Act, which we as a, a Labor government uh, passed through this place and is now law, it does a number of things. It removes interim listings, streamlines the process, cuts red tape, and it saves the taxpayer money in administration costs. It provides a provision for demolition by neglect, a very important component of the new Act. It retains the same penalty regi regime, and remember, there are fines of up to a million dollars with, uh, um, with regard to penalty. Adoption of nationally recognised criteria for assessment under, of course, the Borough Charter. It clarifies the definition of cultural heritage, and the new Act come, uh, overcomes many of the common misconceptions and uncertainties, and uncertainties about the current requirement for local governments to prepare and regularly review, review inventories of heritage buildings. The bill also clarifies the purpose of these surveys as repositories of information on places of local heritage interest to better equip local governments to make informed decisions about heritage matters. Get it on the list. Get it on the list. That's important. Get it on the heritage survey list. In respect to the site raised in your grievance, the Shire of the Mundaring has the capacity to include the Chidlow Army camps on their survey. They have that capacity Thank now, you, and I'd urge them to do it. Thank you, Minister.